All right, welcome back, folks, to our Star Trek Judgment Rights playthrough. Uh, it's brought to us by Borm. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, last time we played, we did the mission Voids. Now we're doing the mission Museum piece. And that's where we're going. Sensors are clear, Captain. So we gotta go to planet... To planet... No word from Nova Atar, Captain. Nova Atar, so that's where we're gonna go. Nova Atar is in the... 16 area, which would be there. You guys can't see the map, but believe me, it's right over here. We've arrived at Nova Atar, Captain. Bring us into standard orbit, Mr. Sue. Hi, Captain. It was not uh, Squeak Squad Kirby music. It was uh, Superstar Ultra. The intro. Okay, so let's uh, first off, let's save. Save new game. Replace pre. Back to the boys. We are at Nova Atar. Curator Bresnia bids you to beam down at your pleasure. And that's what we're gonna do. Beam Mr. down. Scott, Mr. Chekhov, come with me, Mr. Spock, you have the call. Notice that we're not always with Bones and uh, Spock now. Captain Kirk, good to meet you. I am Boris Bresnia, curator of the museum. Everyone is buzzing about visitors from the Enterprise. A real feather in my cap. Um, the pleasure is ours, sir. This is my chief engineer, Mr. Scott, and Ensign Chekhov, our navigator. Most pleased to meet you both. Chekhov, a fine name. I'm certain you will be interested in Sebele, the Cossack study of Konya, distilled and blended by my family. In fact, I will later show you my most prized possession, a bottle of our finest vintage, aged 40 years from our very first press. But isn't Cognac French? Originally, Mr. Scott. But before my ancestors came to settle this planet, they went to Cognac and purchased cuttings, brought them here, and made enhancements. You could say we reinvented Cognac. I do not wish to be rude, but you gentlemen are a bit early, and I must see to making certain the cleaning crews are finished working. Please, feel free to look about a bit. I will page you later, and maybe you will join me in a small toast before the ceremonies? Yes. It would be our pleasure, Curator. All right, let's get out of here. I told you we invented it. Maybe we were a little hard on you, laddie. Never doubted you for a second, Mr. Chekhov. Now let's take advantage of this time and look around. All right, well, let's, uh, first off... Save, save the game. Previous. And let's look around. What is this? The plaque reads, an old ground-based phaser cannon model B-17, the real equalizer, rescued from a Federation scrapyard, probably based on the frontier near Nelapur. This phaser cannon no longer possesses any of its focusing or targeting equipment. The large capacitors in the base allowed a variety of power sources to be used to energize the cannon and gave the real equalizer considerable flexibility in use. Interesting. The Klingon console looks operational, but without a ship attached, it's hard to tell. Written on the plaque, this is a control console from a Klingon warbird, the Klarg, which was salvaged from the battle wreckage near Crimin's 8. Think you could make that work, Mr. Scott? Of course, Captain. But it's not like I'll ever have to. <laughs> Lights cascade continually above the surface of this device. Plaques on each side read, The Vandicourt Aurora Generator was donated to this museum by Sir William Loudon. Originally, a university experiment designed to test broadcast power as both a containment system and photostimulation for possible use in a propulsion system, the unit was presented as a gift to Loudon, who liked the way it looked and had recently donated a significant sum to the university. The plaque reads, The Niven, non-integrated Vulcan electronumerator, was one of the earliest versions of a Vulcan computer. 
Some of the components were found to only function correctly at high temperatures. Since the focus in those early days was on computational effectiveness and not user friendliness, the operator could not stand near the Niven during its operation. Input to the machine was cabled in from a separate device. Hence, it was a non-integrated computer. Amazing. The plaque reads, okay. the Niven. Well, that's that. Let's go to... Seven? The plaque on the old machine reads, an early experimental transporter. The Murnane 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnane 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were also still in testing, making the use of this transporter as much art as science. That spaceman is ripped. This EVA suit was worn by Ivan Petrovsky, a late 21st century Terran astronaut during the famous Commonwealth mission. Petrovsky used this suit to dock with the damaged spacecraft SS Commonwealth and saved the vessel from certain destruction in orbit around Mars. Petrovsky? Isn't that a Russian name? I don't think so, Mr. Chekhov. I sincerely doubt it, Larry. Really? I would have sworn it was Russian. Talk to the boys. Not that I'm ever planning to leave the Enterprise, but a man could do worse than spend his retirement here. A lot worse. I don't know, Scotty. I don't think I can really imagine you wanting to spend your days tinkering with antiques. Perhaps you're right, but uh, these things do have their charm. I hope the ceremony doesn't last too long. I'm starting to get hungry. I'm sure it won't be much longer, Mr. Chekhov. There are some impressive items in this museum. Aye, they went to a lot of trouble to find some of these beauties. The plaque reads, one of the most widely used and most stable designs ever. The Umber Hubble Mark 84 has been used in far more ships than any other model. Oh? Captain Kirk, I trained on one of these. It's solid as a rock and twice as dependable. Remind me after the ceremony. I'll talk to the curator about letting you look this one over. Thank you, Captain. I'd dearly love to put it through its paces. Oh, Scotty. An old communications panel. On the plaque. This communication station was removed off the old freighter, Big Bear Running, when that ship was retired from its customary Benchley to Sawcare run. Outdated by today's standards, this system was known for its powerful transmitter and ease of repair. As a side note, the shell of the Big Bear running was used as a testing target for present models of photon torpedoes. Who? Cool. Is this a dilithium crystals? This display is all glistening angles of crystal. Written on the plaque, an early example of the crystalline computers developed by the Lantoids of Tuner 9. It's a computer. Supposedly impossible to access by non-Lantoid life forms, the computer works on a combination of harmonics and light transmission. The Lantoids make physical contact with the computer to operate it. It is said that listening to a Lantoid operate the computer is like listening to a complex musical score played on delicate chimes. The Lantoids view programming as an art form. The plaque reads, The Dunkelberger Automated Worker Mark 12 was a successful entry in the early days of automated labor. The Mark 12 was designed to function as a cargo helper allowing small manufacturers to cheaply compete against large corporations. Due to their small size, reliability, and obedience, these robots were often treated like pets and given names that were incorporated into their response systems. This particular version was called Barney. I mean, like the first game, it was only uh, Kirk Bones and Spock throughout the whole game. Now we get more Scotty, we get more Chekhov, we had Sulu earlier. That's pretty cool. It's a bit different. 
Written on the plaque, Federation Scientific Probe Model 331-19A. The 331-19A was powered by a small fusion reactor since removed. The 331-19A had considerable range but was considered slow. The 331-19A carried a three-ton instrument array. This has also been removed from the display model. This particular probe was used to monitor the collision of Algiers 5 and Algiers 6. One of the double stars at the core of the Algiers system had begun to collapse to a brown dwarf stage, and the resulting fluctuations resulted in the planet's orbital paths crossing, which led to their collision. I've used one of these before, Captain. Everyone notices the fusion reactor, but I'll bet they forgot the fuel cell that served as backup power for the instrument package. It's probably as dry as a bone after all these years. Okay. Well, it's not like we're going to have to do anything with all of this, right? Right? Some boys here. I bet I could make that wee probe function given a little time, Captain. I suspect the Surrounce wants it just the way it is. But if the opportunity comes up, we can ask if they want you to repair it. This diplomatic stuff is quite dull, Captain. Is it always like this? Unfortunately, Mr. Chekhov, yes. I think I'll stick to starships, Captain. You do that, Ensign. That probe looks like it's seen better days. We're just guards, sir. We don't know anything. We wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I sure hope so. A very old space probe rests on a pedestal in the roped-off area. It shows considerable wear. This case contains an astronomical model of the Lockean system. The plaque reads, An ancient probe recently discovered near the Nova Atar system. Early studies indicate that the probe originated from the Lackian system. Interestingly, the technology involved in the probe's creation surpasses the current technology of the originating planet. Well, that's interesting. I'm sorry, this door is for museum personnel only. Have a nice day. Captain Kirk and party, please report to the curator's office, please. Captain Kirk and Hardy, please report to the curator's office. I hope you enjoyed your tour, gentlemen. Please join me. Would you mind if the first toss with the Kazakhstanian was to the Enterprise? Curator, why isn't that Bresnian cognac? For heaven's sakes, Chekhov, don't interrupt a man on the verge of toasting the best ship in the fleet with the finest cognac on this side of the galaxy. My apologies. Questions later, then. The toast. Here's to the Starship Enterprise. Alert. Alert. What could this be? A conspiracy, if you ask me, Captain. Let me pull this up on screen. What? <laughs> They've destroyed my camera. Well. Let's see how they deal with our other security systems. Okay, well, he's dead. Hey there, Freeport and Za, how you doing? Save new game. Um, things are going down here. Replace previous. You okay, buddy? Ignoring the slight ozone odor, the curator looks peacefully asleep. Oh, you're right. You never got your VIP. I wish Bones were here. He's out, but I can't tell you how bad it is. Oh, yeah, we got no items. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't get in with items, so... Oh, that's going to be interesting. Scotty. Drink the cognac. Scotty, we've got work to do. Seemed like a crime to waste it, Captain. <laughs> yeah, we got no weapons. Not 
Not much of a trap, really. Fixed it up with a wee change of wiring. Leather Yashve and Brelix. Hope you're ready for some Star Trek adventuring. I've checked the system, Captain. Whoever sabotaged it did a fine job. All of the modules of the security system were cut off from each other when the curator tried to trigger the defenses. And I do not think I can repair from here. I wish we had more information. We don't know who they are, what they want, or how long we have to stop them. And hello, Baz, Huvi, and Zura. Say hello with Worm's voice to everyone. Captain, I found the floor plans for that room All in right. here. The room used to house a small aquarium. Whoever's in there probably slid the phasers up a drain under an access panel. That's why the security system did not take notice. At least it's too small for them to crawl out. Aye, but it's close to a main drain, which is big enough. With the phasers they've got, I'd say they could tunnel out in about two hours. Won't the Enterprise detect the phaser fire? Not with that force field sitting above the museum. And we can't shut that off since the security system modules aren't on speaking terms. Aye, well, Captain. They've thought of everything. We'll see, Mr. Scott. So we screwed? Captain, I found the floor plans for that room in here. The room used to house a small aquarium. Whoever's in there probably slid the phasers up okay, a drain under an access panel. At least it's too small for them to crawl out. Aye, but it's... Won't the Enterprise to Not with that force field. And we can't shut that off. Aye, hey, Captain. They we'll see, Mr. Scott. Okay. Hello, Zergo. How you doing? That was terrible. Terribly awesome. All right, let's continue on Save with our game. investigation Let's here. An old suit of armor, but with a strong framework added inside to avoid any accidents. It's holding a large metal lance in its right gauntlet. Take it. The large lance shows somewhere. All right, we're armed. The curator's office is an interesting mix of the old and new. The curator's desk, neat, organized. An enormous bottle of cognac. The plaque below reads, This Jeroboam of Kazakhstanian cognac is from the first blending and 40-year aging on Nova Atar. A small conference table and chairs. A small conference table and chairs. A nearly full decanter of cognac. A small conference table and chairs. They take all of this? Well, let's find out. I feel rather bad about this, Captain. I do too, Scotty, but it's always surprising what you need in an emergency. The decanter is nearly full. This is a very expensive silver tray. Captain, I don't know what we could possibly use these for. No effect. Okay, no, it's nothing. It's just the reflection on no the wall. No effect. What about the desk? This is helpful. There's a button under the edge of the desk when the curator wants to open the door. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No. No, I don't think that's necessary. Mr. Chekhov, see if you can wedge that knight under the door. Yes, Captain. Why? Wait, what? <laughs> there, that should hold the door open. Ow. That knight is not... There's something disturbing about a bird in a cage. No effect. 
All right, let's wait. Wait a minute. Uno momento. What is that? The note on the paper reads: Bresnia, VVSOP twenty one twenty three. I wonder what this is for. The note on the paper reads, Bresnia, VVSOP 2123. All right, so we got what we needed. Oh, well, thank you, Rusty. Save new oh, we game. didn't check the guy, though. We didn't loot the Replace guy. Delete previous. Loot his body. Save new game. Museum. Two. No effect. All right. Well. Oh. The plaque reads, an old ground-based phaser cannon model B-17. Too bad this doesn't still work. I bet we could scare the terrorists out of their plans. Terrorists? I wish we could reach the Enterprise, Captain. That would certainly be of some help, Mr. Scott. Who would do such a thing as this, Captain? We don't know until we find them, Mr. Chekhov. We're still two rooms away from our problem. Let's get closer and see what we can find out. It's working fine. Just doesn't have anything to control right now. I've looked this beastie over and the only things we might be able to use are the capacitors. I've taken them out. They'll soak up a wee bit of power before releasing it. This machine is putting out a fair amount of power. The capacitor should charge very quickly. The capacitor should charge very quickly. Okay. Now what? Basically, use Scotty on everything. Well, it's not like anyone's likely to be using this monstrosity soon, so I pulled out the only things we might be able to use. It's not much, only some heat resistant wiring and a cable. Check off takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Check off takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Okay. Save new game. Replace pre. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. Uh, VVSOP twenty one twenty three. Authorization code correct. Warning: malfunction in security authorization. Access denied. It appears that the terrorists do not want any visitors. The note on the paper reads. Bresnia, VVSOP 2123. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. Security lockdown. 
Lock deactivated. Okay. So we gotta find another code then. We haven't been here before though. This was a sensor diagram from the Remembrance, an early Terran interstellar craft. Low and sleek, this space vehicle has a Spartan look, written on the plaque. This is the escape pod in which the famous smuggler known as the Black McKiernan was captured. Unable to outrun his pursuers, McKiernan tried to escape in the pod as he blew up his ship, hoping the authorities would think he had perished. The pod had been specially constructed of expensive metalloceramic alloys to withstand such an escape tactic. Unfortunately for McKiernan, the pursuit included a trailing scout ship looking for a backtracking maneuver. And when the smiling smuggler opened the hatch thinking he'd made planetfall, he was treated to the inside view of a Federation cruiser's shuttle bay. That would make a fine battering ram. Too bad we can't possibly get it up to speed. Or can we? The surface of the old docking ring is pitted from micrometeorite strikes, and there are several large welds running completely around it. Many magnetic coupling clamps are uniformly spaced around the ring. The plaque reads, This docking ring was recovered in pieces from the port facilities at Genevieve 9, where it was broken when a freighter, the Hardy, accidentally turned on its thrusters just before mooring was completed. You know, Captain, this looks like the rings we worked on during my cadet summer training assignment. Before or after the welds, Mr. Chekhov? <laughs> There's a story in this, isn't there? Before or after the welds, Mr. Chekhov? Oh, what do we say? There's a story in this, isn't there? Of course, Captain. Why else would I be talking? As I was saying, we worked with these type of rings. We were working in spacesuits outside the station, practicing maneuvering things around. When the instructors would take a break, we would line up several of the rings. After lining them up, we would float a piece of metal toward the first one. The trick was to turn on the magnets as the metal approached, so it would accelerate towards the hole. Then we turned off the magnets as it passed through. When this was done for each ring, the piece of metal would go very fast out the backside. Rather hard on the box, wasn't it? What box? We were in space. And I'm talking about knocking down the door. The lad's got a good idea, Captain. If we cannot go around that big door, we can go through it. I thought that's what I said. Well, gentlemen, why are we standing here talking? It's a good question. The magnetic clamps will be just the thing, Captain. This is a bizarre piece of machinery. I wonder what it was designed for. Do we not check that out? The plaque reads, A failed experiment in Habis Robotics. The Green Mark VI was one of those ideas where the original concept might have been sound. But the follow-ups were too much. Planned as a simple cargo handler, attempts were made at increasing its function and therefore its flexibility. Unfortunately, proposed missions such as security were well beyond its recognition systems and processors. One small piece of lasting notoriety was that the Mark VI was one of the first Habis robotic uses of room temperature superconducting wiring. While the wiring concept went forward, little else of this robot did. If we could make it run, maybe we could use it to force the door open. Interesting idea, Mr. Chekhov. We'll have to keep it in mind. This is a bizarre piece of machinery. I wonder what it was designed for. Maybe we gotta use the batteries we got? I don't understand what you want me to do, Captain. I can't imagine what this machine could be good for. You just told us! What about a battery?
That has to be one of the most useless <laughs> robots I've ever seen. <laughs> Badly designed, Captain. It's not going to help us, is it? Only in a dance contest, Mr. Chekhov. This is not exactly my area of expertise. Oh. There's no way anyone could fix this piece of junk, no matter how much time was available. But I did get some wires that may be helpful. Everything on this pod's too tight. I need the proper tools. I was able to get one loose access panel, but I'm not sure what we can do with it. I wish we could take this one, Captain. But unfortunately, there's little else I can do with it now. Hello, Frank. How you doing? Okay. Something fell off. This? You take the capacitor out of the robot. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. This is not exactly my area of expertise. This is not exactly my area of expertise. This is not exactly my area of expertise. No effect. What happened to your voice? Relics happened. <laughs> The capacitor should charge very quickly. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. What was it again? Vsop. Vsop. You scroll up. Authorization code correct. Warning. Malfunction in security authorization. Access denied. It appears that the terrorists do not want any visitors. Okay. I don't think we have time to talk now, Captain. It'll take me about two hours just to finish this job, Captain. Scotty, we don't have two hours. You're asking for a miracle, Captain? You've always delivered them in the past, Mr. Scott. Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. What do we have? A protective panel salvaged from an escape pod. Superconducting wires. Normal heat resistant wires. U shaped magnetic clamps. Okay. A standard 350 micron interface cable. We do have the magnets, these ones. What do we do with it? Just clamps on door? No, I don't think that's necessary. On gun? No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. Are we going to make a railgun? We we'll still have to wire them up, Captain. That's going to be the real job. Think magnet magneto. Actually, Captain, I don't think these will do. They'd survive firing the beastie, but they don't carry enough current for what we're likely to need. Captain, I'll need a little help positioning the clamps correctly while wiring them. 
Captain, push harder. I'll need these tighter to get more power. I'm giving it all I got, Scotty. Uh... We are hooked up here, Captain. Actually, Captain, I don't think these will do. They'd survive firing the beastie, but they don't carry enough current for what we're likely to need. I'm sure if we could find something that would work in this place. It conducts electricity fine, but silver's not so hot with magnetism. We'll be lucky to launch it off the end of the table. No, no I don't think that's necessary. No, we got a, a plaque. This. This is mostly ceramic, Captain. Not likely to work well with our little beastie here. Hmm, what do we... Oh, the lance! Of course! One projectile ready to go, Captain. You take the lance off the mass driver. No, I don't think that's necessary. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. And no, you did not tell me you got your eyes lasered. One How is projectile it? Projectile ready to go, Captain. How is it? I don't understand what you want me to do, Captain. I we'll need to have a power storage source before we can do anything else. How do we fire the lance? Do we gotta use the table? I think I'll leave this machine to the experts. Oh, we gotta use the console. Yeah. Okay. Spent like 25. We'll need to have a power hundred less than expensive than, than, than expected. Else. Really, that's pretty good. We'll need to have a power storage source before we can do anything else. Oh, we got a power storage source right here. No, I don't think that's necessary. What? Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Oh, we're ready to go. I think I'll leave this machine to the experts. We'll need to have a power storage source before we can do anything else. Then we gotta use the wires here. No, I don't think that's necessary. Yeah. No, I don't think that's necessary. Went from minus eight to zero. That's pretty good. Save new game. Replace previous game. What are you gonna do with your new eye powers? Waste them all on video games? Impale red shirt. No, that's Scotty. Let's not impale Scotty. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. Started playing Final Fantasy XIV and it eats my soul. I've been meaning to replay that. No, I don't think that's necessary. We'll need to have a power storage source before we can do anything else. Storage source?
I don't understand what you want me to do, Captain. I don't even know what I want me to do. Put the battery on the table. Oh, maybe. There's not enough power yet. We'll need another capacitor. Um. Seems like you're right, bug guy. I think I'll leave this machine to the experts. There's worth, there's worth things you can play like FGO. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Captain. This will be just like old times. School must miss you dearly, Mr. Scott. Don't get in front of that, Kirk. Are you insane? Oh, we inverted the magnets and a little fire backwards. The answer was in your hand all along. Let's not even start with that. Save new game. Replace previous game. I'm not here for riddles. Right, so I guess the uh, we wait for the things to recharge. Or not. An old style phaser cannon capacitor. It is currently uncharged. Remind me never to play tennis with you, Mr. Scott. Ah, uh, just like my old school days. Must have been quite interesting to matriculate with you, Mr. Scott. Shall we go see if there's anything else to blow up? Did you know there's Mahjong and Lord of Vermilion? There's Lord of Vermilion? Really? Oh. The engineering panel. Look what we've done. A spacesuit. We made a bit of a mess here, didn't we? We had no choice. Remember, who's really at fault here? That we will, Captain. Okay. The plaque on the old machine reads, an early experimental transporter. The Murnane 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnane 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were also still in testing, making the use of this transporter as much art as science. The plaque on the old machine reads, Whatever used to be on this pedestal is now long gone. By it. Although badly scuffed, when it was blasted free of the ceiling, the gas canister and nozzle look functional. The curator mentioned these were in each room. We could open the door and spray it on the terrorists. If it's fast enough to stop them from using their phasers, it'll stop us too. And they'd get a warning if the door started to open. Time enough to put the hostages in jeopardy. I thought it was like a... Like a doll or something. You could transport the silver the train to The gas canister is a bit beat up from the fall, but still functional. You can play Final Fantasy XIV for free and play the Mahjong? I'm in. I'm in! Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. A uh, VVSOP uh, 20. What? Twenty. I three. <laughs> Save new game. Replace previous game. The access panel is stuck, Captain. 
I don't think any of us are strong enough to pull it free. We can't have it do anything until we get it running. This is an odd beastie, Captain. I'm not even sure how they powered this thing. It'd take days to begin to understand it. You, Scotty? I'm only human, Captain. I'm only human, Captain. Checkoff takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Checkoff takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. We can't do anything with this mess. The capacitors are the only thing to survive. We can't do anything with this mess. The capacitors are the only thing to survive. I sure hope the capacitor is good enough for the robot. There's only a wee bit of juice in this capacitor, but I think it'll be enough to power up the robot. It's a tight squeeze, Captain. I don't think we'd be able to get it back out once it's in. Should I go ahead and do it? We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energize the robot. Not yet, Mr. Scott. We may need that power elsewhere. We could use the help, Mr. Mm. Scott. Energize the robot. Not yet. Let's save war. Is we mess up bad. Save new game. Save new replay. Delete previous. Save new game. Use capacitor on crystal. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. Don't work. There's only a wee bit of juice in this capacitor, but I think it'll be enough to power up the robot. It's a tight squeeze, Captain. I don't think we'd be able to get it back out once it's in. Should I go ahead and do it? We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energize the robot. Okay. Barney, open the pod bay door. I knew it. They forgot to take out the fuel cell. That fusion reactor always scares people enough that they forget the backup cell. It's dry now. You'd need to wet this beauty down and get a catalyst in her. Okay. We need to wet this beauty down. If I talk, I can't work or think, Captain. I hope we get the terrorists soon, Captain. I'm afraid we might be late if we don't hurry. Time may be a factor, gentlemen. Let's work a bit faster. Get her wet? Better than brandies? More than stums? Look out, fuel cell. Here she comes. Now what? No, I don't think that's necessary. Silver tray. Why? It's a good thing to build in so much flexibility. The silver isn't a bad catalyst and will act as a contact too. 
Or are we going to charge the battery? All hooked up and charging, Captain. So you guys were right. Look at that. All ready to go, Captain. You remove the silver tray. No effect. As usual. Uh, yeah, about that. Save new game. Replace pre. Okay, so we got a battery charged. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. No, this is where the terrorists Incorrect are. Incorrect access code. Access denied. An old communications panel. On the plaque, this communication station was removed off the old freighter, Big Bear Running, when that ship was retired from its customary Benchley to Sawcare run. Outdated by today's standards, this system was known for its powerful transmitter and ease of repair. And as a side the note, the, the shell of the Big Bear like Running work. was used as a testing target for present models of photon torpedoes. Well, let's have Scotty do everything first. You'll have to wait, Mr. Scott. Hi, Captain. You think Uhura would like it if we swapped this one for hers? Scotty, I never took you for having a death wish. Actually, Captain, this one's not in bad shape. They took the transmitting gear and she's got no power. But other than that, she's in fine condition. They run a ship-shaped museum here. I don't think McCoy would like this transporter, Captain. Even I would not want to use this one. You? Not use a piece of equipment? Why not, Mr. Scott? This little beastie put out a wee bit of energy discharge during transport. You've heard of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle? Of course, Mr. Scott. Well, this is the Mulligan Certainty Field, guaranteed to do bad things to you even Dr. McCoy cannot fix. You can block the radiation, but she's not something I'd want to play with unless I absolutely had to. You'd have to repair the wires anyway. And the power unit's been pulled out, too. Okay, well... We can... We got the, the plaque here. This should work. I hope. What... What do you mean, I hope? It wasn't easy, but the wiring's fixed, Captain. It's never easy, is it, Mr. Scott? Hi, Captain. It's in there, Captain. Well, Captain, she's functional. Now we have to decide what to do with her. Yes. It's inside. We should wait until it's time to transport before we activate the valve. Good idea, Anson. We're about as ready as we can get, Captain. I'll have the robot open the gas valve and I'll transport on your signal. Shall we give it a go? Oh. 
Energize, Mr. Scott. Let's hold off for now, Mr. Scott. Energize, Mr. Scott. I don't understand what you want me to do, Captain. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter <sighs> access code. What's the password again? VVSOP2123? The gas worked. Mr. Chekhov, have Dr. McCoy beam down to make sure the curator and guards are all right. Mr. Scott, lower the museum's shields and have a security team beamed aboard. Captain's log supplemental. With the terrorist unconscious, it was an easy matter to turn off the security override. The terrorist turned out to be from another family from Lockheed, the Onikon, a family with a long history of feuding with the Saransi, who also claimed the probe. The probe was the very same probe that discovered Lockean and had enormous symbolic importance to the families on the planet. Curator Bresnia was treated by Dr. McCoy and is in good health. Accommodations are in order for Scott and Chekhov for meritorious service. Lieutenant Uhura, send a message to Admiral Richards. Tell him he owes me more than he thinks he does. Aye, sir. I have a feeling he's not going to be surprised. I'm afraid I'm going to remember this mission with a great deal of sadness, Captain. Why is that, Mr. Scott? It was such a fine cognac, Captain. It was just waiting for us, and now it's gone forever. Such a waste. You always remember the one that got away. Uh, sure, Scott. Captain, message incoming from Starfleet. I see they got our report. On screen. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Well done, Kirk. Keep up the good work. I must say, however, your performance is not what we've come to expect from <laughs> James T. Kirk. Oh, I guess we no. all have our off days, Captain. Kane out. What did we do wrong? Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, it's not failure, but it's not A+. Plus. Captain's log start at 6169.3. While delivering supplies to outposts near Klingon and Romulan space, we received a distress signal from the Romulan neutral zone. On screen, Captain. This is Sub-Commander Guyon of the Warbird Infinitus. We are under attack. Assist us, please. Transmission jammed at the source, sir. The transmission originated on the Romulan side of the neutral zone. Captain, this could be a setup. The Romulans might be trying to lure us into a treaty violation. We can't interfere in Romulan business. Take us to our next mission. This day is not going well. Captain, we have an emergency message from Starfleet. Code 1. That's a planetary catastrophe. On screen. Captain. A very large alien ship is about to land on the planet Atipus in the Klingon neutral zone. The aliens stated that they intend to land in the midst of the capital city. Then the ship cut communications with us. Since then, all attempts to contact the alien craft have failed. You are the closest starship to Atipus. We want you to evaluate the situation and safeguard the colonists. We need you to make contact with the aliens. Okay. What's the mission called? Atabis is located in the Klingon neutral zone. The Federation won the colonization rights for that planet as per the Organian Peace Treaty. Both Federation and Klingon ships are allowed there. Save new game. Save new replace previous game. Delete pre. Save new game. Atabis one. Okay, so um, gotta pull up the star map. Atabis, where are ya? Atabis is eight, and eight is over there. Sensor range. I detect one Klingon battlecruiser on a parallel course. The Klingon commander is hailing us. On screen. Greetings, Enterprise. 
Welcome to Atomus. I am Captain Clark. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. I take it that this is not your vessel. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. I appreciate your courtesy, Captain. I wish to inform you that we mean the colonists no harm. You have my word that I intend to take no action against them. As you know, this is neutral space. I have as much right to be here as you. If you do not question this right, I believe that we are capable of bridging any misunderstandings that might arise in this delicate situation. I have always admired the Federation's diplomatic abilities. I believe we both have more important matters on our minds. Until later, Captain. Well, it never rains, but pours. Mr. Sulu, take us into a parallel course with the alien ship. Aye, aye, Captain. That is a big ship. Sensors appear to be experiencing malfunctions. Fascinating. Some anomalous readings are reoccurring. That would indicate that the ship itself is changing in unexpected ways. I have no explanation for the phenomenon. I have found at least one area that is suitable for transport. No response from the alien ship, sir. Perhaps their communication system is malfunctioning? The Klingons regret that they are too busy to resume communications at this time. The voice acting is better now than McCoy's. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Now the voice acting I thought would be worse. At first it was kind of bad, but now it's pretty uh, on par. Replace previous. All right, well, so beam in, buddy. We're beaming aboard the alien vessel. Have Dr. McCoy meet us in the transporter room. Spock, come with me. Lieutenant Uhura, if its communication system is malfunctioning, then we'll need you. Yes, Captain. Uhura? You have the call. We're going to have Uhura? Let's talk to everyone. Talk to everyone. Captain, individuals on this ship appear to be suffering, perhaps from certain mental disorders. Were I to examine them, I might be able to determine something more. Captain, this place gives me the willies. I feel like I'm on a yellow alert without knowing why. Well, if you want to hit the bathroom, just let me know. I find the situation in this room disturbingly irrational. First impression, Captain. I suggest we endeavor to understand what we see around us in order to make a sensible analysis. We have to find a way to help these people. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. The table is a sturdy construct of manufactured organic and inorganic products. 0.7366 meters high, 2.2 meters wide, and 4.641 meters long. In short, there's nothing special about it. That's what you think. And they say I'm the crazy one. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What's going on here? Who's in charge? Nobody's really in charge. Maybe the phase. That's one of the things that makes me so nervous. Nobody's really in charge. I try to take charge of little things, like making sure the lights work. I don't like the dark. Are you going to be in charge now? Maybe you should talk to the phase first. The phase? What's the phase? Why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has many resources. Would you tell me about this ship? Why are you going to land in a town on Atavis? Why didn't you respond to our hail? The phase? What's the phase? Why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has many resources. Probably this. We've been doing fine for a thousand generations, Captain. Maybe more. We're happy here, just waiting for the ship to return to the builders. <laughs> that's, that's the promised time when we come home. 
we don't need any help. Who are the builders? Builders? Let's get back to the main subject. Maybe you can tell me about your people. Who are the builders? The builders are the builders, of course. <laughs> Us. But a long time ago. The phase can explain it better. I get confused sometimes. <laughs> the builders built the oratory. The room there to the south, they built the garden north. If you're hungry or if your head ain't feeling right, there's food and such in the hall. Through there, the west door. The rest hall is through the east door, but you might have to wait for one of the beds. The builders were just so logical. They, they thought of everything. <laughs> you can go anywhere. You know, Jim, I don't think there's much more he can tell us. I can take a tricorder reading on him if you think it's appropriate. Do you think it's appropriate? The nervous youngster flinches away. You are of the dark, are you? But you can't hurt me. Not while the lights are on. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not. Well, if, if you want it to be racist, okay. He glances up swiftly, then returns to his careful study of the tabletop. Go away. I'm busy. My table must be kept clean. Go away. You're breathing on my table. Scan him. His mental activity is very high, but doesn't seem pathologic, Jim. Respiratory activity indicates a high degree of anxiety by comparison with others of his race. Now that much stress is unhealthy if this is a chronic state. Slightly undernourished, sluggish pulmonary and circulatory conditioning. Doesn't get nearly enough exercise, I'd say. Brainwave activity uneven. I'd need a battery of tests to be sure. This is a complete new race, after all, but he may be suffering from some blood chemistry imbalances likely to be affecting his mind. A table. A potted plant. A comfortable-looking room suited for small gatherings of people. A sturdy, simple chair. A set of books. A comfortable looking room suited for small gatherings of people. A comfortable looking room suited for small gatherings of people. <laughs> the king. These two individuals may be able to tell us something, Captain. I'd like to examine these two individuals, Captain. Captain, the man in that throne-like chair seems to be staring at me. Perhaps I should try to talk to him. Sure. Go for it. What a noble-looking woman you are. You have my permission to speak. You stand out remarkably, bearing yourself like a queen. Yet these carls do not treat you as royalty. Surely you have royal blood flowing in your veins? Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My leader here is Captain Kirk, an admirable man. Speak with him. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. That's, you know what, that's probably the right one. Royalty recognizes royalty, does it not? Look on me and decide for yourself. You will know. Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. Oh, I am so glad to find another of royal blood. I am so tired of sitting here all the time, but whenever I leave, thralls and lesser folk plant their fundaments on the great throne, and that's just not acceptable. I know you'll mind the proprieties and not let anyone else sit on the throne. And now, I'll finally be able to go and get some rest. Okay. 
An ordinary chair, originally similar to others in the room, except someone has nailed the legs onto a raised platform, increased the height of the back, widened the seat, and glued on broad and blocky arms. Bright paint in red and purple and gold gives it a garish appearance. You think it's meant to look impressive, but it just looks rather pathetic. Save new game. Replace previous game. Um, I guess we can replace. A piece of cloth. A normal looking switch. This individual wears a placid expression as he piles one block atop another, playing quietly. The incongruous thing is that he appears to be a full grown adult. Noticing that you're looking at him, he raises his arms to you with a hopeful look. A book. You pick that up? I don't see how these can help us, Captain. I don't see how these can help us, Captain. I don't see how these can help us, Captain. Okay. You managed to untwist a length of wire and a light bar. Nice. This person has reached adulthood physically, Jack. But brain activity scans suggest he may have suffered a failure to mature intellectually. Save new game. I wonder where this episode is gonna go. Replace previous game. Delete previous game. I think it's gonna be heavy-handed. Save new game. I've got a feeling it's gonna be heavy-handed. Had. What was the name again? Adibus. Save new game. Adibus two. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Jacobsy. What can you tell me about this place, Jacobsy? The sweet-faced adult shakes his head no. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Jacobsy. What can you tell me about this? Can I play with the blocks, Jacobsy? Can you smile for me, Jacobsy? <laughs> can you smile for me, Jacobsy? Is there something you want, Jacobsy? The sweet-faced adult shakes his head no. Okay. The tricorder informs me that the Klingon boarding crew has just beamed into the adjacent room, Captain. You are the cook. I am Kla, captain of the Paul Yar. This is my aid. These Klingons are so innovative in their introductions. Shh. I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These are my crew, Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. What can I do for you, Captain Kla? You can avoid interfering with me or my man as we look around the my ship. My man. The same as you. And with the same air of mutual goodwill, we will avoid interfering with your activities. Unless we have cause to think your actions in some way threaten us or the Empire we represent. We do not threaten the Klingon Empire, Captain Clark, nor its legitimate representatives. Then there will be no difficulties between us, will there? We will leave you to your investigations now and carry on our own. You won't mind if we're in the room, will you? We'd consider it a mark of our mutual respect, Captain. 
If you don't get in our way, then we won't get in yours. A wan-looking female stands dejectedly, her shoulders slumped. Her whole appearance expresses deep worry and bone-crushing weariness. Captain, I think that woman looks like someone we should talk with. Captain, I'm seeing all these people as being under medication, or needing to be. And they're all unhealthy in one way or another. It really doesn't surprise me that they associate food and medicine. Their veins are probably always swimming with some chemical stew. Captain, it appears that the inhabitants of this ship take it as given that food and medication go naturally together. With all respect to Dr. McCoy, I would dislike having a physician medicating all food that passed my lips. I could try to talk with her if you wish, Captain. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Are you feeling all right, ma'am? Can you tell me what the problem is? You look so sad. Would it help to tell us why you look so down? Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Gotta announce who we are. I'm called Ma. My son is Stan Bob. And I failed him. I feel so badly. I'm a terrible mother. The woman's eyes brim with tears and she can't continue the conversation. Okay. A mechanized food delivery and recycling system not unlike what you see every day aboard the Enterprise. A mechanized food delivery and recycling system not unlike what you see every day aboard the Enterprise. A computer terminal with various access ports, a scanning rod, and a workspace. Female, just moving into middle age. Her overall level of health is fairly good. Vital signs are down marginally, and mental readings indicate a chemical array typical of severe depression. However, there are high levels of tranquilizing chemicals in her bloodstream. <laughs> okay. This appears to be a kind of all-purpose first aid station and medical dispensary with computer-aided diagnostics. Captain, from the configuration of equipment here, it is possible for someone to use this machine as a workstation and prepare medicine for someone who, for example, would be unable to come to the station for treatment. A metal and plastic construct slightly over a meter high built into the floor. This mechanized food delivery and recycling system is similar to the Enterprise's system. One significant difference is that it includes a scanning feature on the person making the request for food. I also note that the machinery accepts used dishes and reusable materials for recycling. Since this ship is a narrowly enclosed system, Captain, of the various mental conditions we have seen among the inhabitants of this ship, most, although not all, have been non-violent. Dr. McCoy may need to examine this data further, but I believe through the food dispenser, the individuals aboard this ship are regularly medicated, often tranquilized. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. I'm just a simple country doctor, not a magician. There are some things I just can't fix. It sure, sure. We ta already talked to these guys. There's, there's the king sleeping, I'm trying to sleep. A youngster is sitting alone, quietly playing. This elderly individual lies on a bed, his eyes closed in sleep. He clutches a blue blanket tightly around him. I 
I think the youngster looks a little wan, either from lack of the right foods or insufficient exercise, and there don't seem to be others his age he could pal around with. I believe this room shows that this was, in fact, a sleeper ship, Captain. Notice the beds. They appear to be in general use now, but show every evidence of being cryosleep pods initially. Oh. As institutionalized as this room appears, Captain, you can see people have done a few things to make it more their own. I wouldn't be surprised if people stash trinkets away, things that have use and meaning to no one but them. Then again, I am definitely not going to suggest we go looking. Some of these beds don't appear to have been changed in longer than I want to think about. However, if someone wants to show us one of their little treasure boxes, I'll bet it's been well hidden. Hey. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? I'm Stan Bob. Did my mom say I could talk to you? Why, yes, she did. What can you tell us about things going on here? No, not exactly. We'd like to know what you can tell us about things going on here, though. I don't know that we've seen your mother. Still, if you can tell us something... Why, yes, she did. No, not exactly. We'd like to know what you can tell us about things going on here, though. I don't think my mom would want me to talk to you. Please go away and stop bothering me. Damn it, Stan Bob. One, Say hey, we're not here to lie, are we? Replace previous... This individual is a juvenile in good condition, although mildly undernourished. There's no immediate danger, but there's some traits that should be watched. He's healthy now, both mentally and physically, but he's at some risk if he's put under too much stress. This individual is a bit elderly, but not in too bad shape when you take that into account. He he seems to be suffering some brain lesions that might be genetically linked to nerve degeneration in the lower back. What are we going to do with this area? Get back! I don't recognize you, you strangers! Rackaback, Gormagon, you recognize these people? No, no Tuscan, we sure, sure don't. don't. Keep them away. Keep them away from me. They'll hurt us. They're out to get us, I tell you. Have I ever been wrong? No, Tuscan. You kept us safe, and we keep you safe. We won't let them get you. You people don't want to come any closer. Honest, I don't want to have to hurt any of you. It's just that Tuscan won't like it. I hope you don't mind, but you really have got to stay back. Protect me. They're after me. We'll hurt you. So just stay back. We really don't want to hurt you, you know, but you gotta stay back. See here, Captain Claw. I told you those Federation scum would be nosing around behind our backs. The Klingon observers seem interested in remaining to watch what goes on here. Oh, the Klingons are watching. Save new game. Replace previous No game. hugs. We have here. You like chess? Any good? Jake sees a whiz at it, even though he's pretty slow about everything else. My brother Rackaback took away his stuffed bear. Jake's he won't come in here to play no more. This is my greatest game ever. I'll give you the bear if you can beat me. Yeah, you can have the dumb bear if you beat my brother at chess. And if you don't cheat. Well, I know who can play chess. It's Spock complex situation however check and mate how'd you do that he cheated you brother he must have cheated you no that's a legal move here take the bear i promised and i do what i say i think it's a dumb game that's what i think of this game oh no he mad. I think it's a dumb game. That's what I think of this game. Mad cause bad. Let's get out of here.
Let's go use the bear on Jakesy. Probably scan it first. A large, irregular animal form construction, evidently used as a toy. Component materials include woven and pulp plant fiber and extruded plastics. together the blocks and gives them out to you. We've got blocks now. The blocks are an unusual organic substance high in compounds of phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and calcium. In this form, the chemicals are inert and make a practical non-toxic toy. Okay. We got we got cubes. Save new game. Replace. What the hell is this? These plants look brown, pinched, and wilted, although their root systems are as well developed as those in the other hydro bins. Attached is a sealed metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. A trace of greenish mold rims the connection joint. We are just here to look around, Captain. I'm sure you don't mind. Would it matter if we did? Your doctor's discourtesy, though indirect, does no credit to your party, Captain Kirk. I would have expected better when we have done nothing to warrant rudeness. We need not interfere with one another's activities, I think. Oh, the These Klingons. Green and healthy with strong stems and shiny leaves. Always in the way. These plants look green and healthy with strong stems and shiny leaves. What was the keg over there? No effect. No effect. Testing your strength, you attempt to remove the container from its housing. Unfortunately, it is permanently attached to the rest of the machinery. The feeder hose comes free and a mechanism pulls it out of the way. But a terrible stench rises out of the container, smelling like many things died in there long ago. A large countertop well suited as a workbench with what appears to be mechanized assists and a hookup close at hand. A small data terminal seems to be part of the design. A square-shaped metal keg with a feeder hose attachment coming out of the side. So we gotta use the keg on the workbench? The nutrient broth in this container has become contaminated. It should be disinfected before the container can be reused. All right, so how do we disinfect it? I don't Save think we picked up any disinfectant. This might be a nice little garden if they added some rustic wooden benches and a little fountain, I guess. A hydroponics room, Captain. The console against the wall appears to be a workbench. A shame there aren't any flowers, Captain, but the lushness of the greenery is still very pleasant. This 40-liter capacity metal keg is constructed of steel with non-reactive alloy lining. The round opening for the feeder attachment is just under 10 centimeters in diameter. Inside is an uncomplicated life form, and it appears to fill the interior of the keg. That keg is steel and alloy, but inside is something unusual. 
That greenish mold around the lip appears to be a wild growth. Can't compete against more complex plant life in an open ecosystem. But in isolation with a nutrient-rich broth, which I take it the keg contains, it does very well indeed. Of course, it seems to have completely blocked the feeder tube, which probably accounts for why the plant's struggling to survive in this hydro pen. Blocking stuff? Well, we dealt with something like that before. Beam it. The container heats up rapidly and foul-smelling smoke pours out of the small opening on the top. This container must be refilled with nutrient broth before it is replaced for use. Two feeder hoses roll out on wired mechanisms and insert into the container. From one flows a clear liquid nearly filling the container. The other hose just makes burping noises. Burping noises? Okay. You guys have any ideas? This might be a nice little garden if they added some rustic wooden benches and a little fountain, I guess. A hydroponics room, Captain. The console against the wall appears to be a workbench. Oh, I got an idea. Combination workspace and computer console, Captain, with robotic leads on the visible hookups. The data terminal appears to serve as data storage and analysis of materials put on the countertop. In short, I believe it acts as a gardener's assistant to anyone working on the plants in this room. I do detect some evidence of malfunction in one of the hookups, but I believe it would take the inestimable skills of someone like Commander Scott to track down the problem, much less repair it. Are you saying it's broken? Only a small part seems to be broken, something involving one of the feed lines. The rest of it appears to be in good order. One of the feed lines is broken. Okay. No life form registration. Health reading zero. No life form registration, Captain. The keg has only inert chemicals inside, none of which would sustain life, at least not in their present form. Do you really expect me to analyze this, Jim? The blocks are an unusual organic substance, high in compounds of phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and calcium. In this form, the chemicals are inert and make a practical non-toxic toy. We're not going to unleash the molds of war. We're trying to figure out what to put in this, uh, this thing. It's right, blocks. Maybe we've got to put the blocks inside. The blocks fit through the opening, splashing as they plunge into the liquid. <coughs> that work? Inadequate dissolution of nutrients in liquid medium. Oh no, let's save. I might be I might doing I might be doing something stupid here. Save new game. The 
container heats up slowly and the sound of bubbling echoes from inside. You stop and the container quickly cools. I think that did it, Captain. I do not think this accomplishes anything at this point. This container of nutrient broth is ready for use. You take the metal keg. Why are we doing this? No, I don't think that's necessary. You settle the container back into the niche it was removed from. The feeder hose, looking shiny and clean, rides out on some mechanism and reattaches to the newly filled container. You hear gurgling and see the nutrient broth begin swirling through the liquid medium. The dying plants seem to perk up before your very eyes. Okay. These plants look green and healthy, with strong stems and shiny leaves. A Klingon officer whose direct and intense expression never wavers. Well, we fixed the plants. Did that do anything? Take his last block. No, it's fine. Oh, thought there was a way there. James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These others are my crew. Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. Who are you? We are the Faith. Did not your parents speak of me? Captain, note that it identifies itself only erratically in the singular eye, and a blend of voices typifies its communication. Are you suggesting it is a hive mind, Mr. Spock? Or is the voice synthesizer simply programmed for a harmonic chord of voices. Inconclusive. It may also be that an array of otherwise independent machines have been linked to provide the requisite computing power, although that is an antique and unsophisticated method of achieving this level of intelligence at odds with the overall level of sophistication and evidence. I suggest we pay close attention to both its actions and its words. Phase, why would our parents have spoken of you? I am here to care for all of you, Kirk. It is easier for me to care for you when you are younger, but sometimes one's parents are forgetful. We understand. I will care for you now. You will feel better after you eat. Great. A food-fixating, mothering computer. It could, in fact, be very much that. FaZe, you're about to land on a planet inhabited by sentients in the middle of a settlement. If you are in control of this vessel, you must stop. You must not land there. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now. I'm very busy. Okay. I find the room fascinating, Captain. Worthy of close examination in every regard. I would suggest that Dr. McCoy examine the woman lying on the floor. That woman appears to need medical attention. You get no response. Someone seems to have been quite indiscriminate about damaging everything they could reach in here. An extremely complex mechanical construct, Captain. 
Readings indicate this is a functional AI, an artificial intelligence of considerable sophistication. It may not be in perfect condition, however. Certain power shunts may be repair solutions to malfunctioning subsets. It sounds like you're saying they're scar tissue, where the machine healed old damage. Precisely, Doctor. This machinery appears to have been a read-only computer terminal. The configuration and construction is unique, to say the least, from what I can make out. It is utterly destroyed, beyond any hope of repair. She's cataleptic, Jim. Completely submerged within her mind. Completely withdrawn from external stimuli. If I were to put her arm up in the air, it would stay there until I moved it back down. Psychological damage or something physical? I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests. But from the tricorder readings, I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown or weak-minded. There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict her adult pattern creation representation cap. <laughs> Bone, stop. You're starting to sound like Spock. You do not have to be insulting, Captain. Save new game. Replace. We talked to her? There is no response at all. Not even a flicker of attention crosses the person's eyes. We're playing Disco Elysium. The guts of this machinery have been torn from the wall, leaving broken plastic and bent metal dangling. It doesn't look like it will ever work again. Evidently, this was an electronic device, almost certainly a reader or computer interface. It is severely damaged beyond any repair. Oh, the plants, uh... The nutrient additive is making these fruit-bearing plants grow at an astonishing rate. Oh, the Klingons. Jim, we don't have time for that now. 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 Testing your strength, you attempt to remove the container from its housing. Unfortunately, it is permanently attached to the rest of the machinery. We can't pick up the fruit? Jim, we don't have time for that now. Oh, maybe because the Klingons are here. Or the fruit weren't mature? The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. So we got fruit. What do we do with fruit? You eat it. Yeah, but I'm not hungry. This fruit is perfectly ripe and delicious. Oh, we ate it. The job relics. Now we gotta go get more fruit. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. 
You already have a piece of fruit. Soft pot. Imagine that. We can now take on the Klingons. Lady, you want a fruit? You got the plants to give fruit again, and I'd given up. Oh, I'm so happy. But I don't want to eat this. My son loves fruit, can't get enough, and I want him to have this. Please take it to him. He should be playing in the sleeping hall. I've warned him about not talking to strangers, but it's all right if you do so. You can tell him I said it was okay. And now we're not lying. Hey kid, want some fruit? This is for me? Wow, thank you. Mom would really be happy. She has been so sad about not being able to give me what I like to eat. Even though I told her it was okay, she was really, really sad. Now she'll be really happy. Thank you. You get no response. Hi there, remember me? Uh-huh. I remember. You want to ask me about something. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Sure. Tuscan and his friends aren't nice to me. They're nice to my mom because they trust her, though. She's the only one that brings them food. Sometimes she brings me safe food, too, but she hasn't lately. I get pretty hungry because the safe food I put away in a secret place isn't any good anymore. Tell me about Tusk. Tell me about the playroom. It's through there, through the East Door. Tuscan and his friends have taken it over. They play mean, except they don't play mean to my mom. That's on account of they think she won't let the food be bad. Tell me about, tell me, tell me about your mom. Her name's Mom. She takes care of the garden, but she gets real sad a lot. She brings me fresh fruit, says it's good for me. I like fresh fruit, whole bunches. She hasn't brought me any in a while, and what I put away in a secret place isn't looking good anymore. Tell me about, tell, tell, tell me about the food. The food out of the machines can make me feel really sleepy and not very good. Mom says it's because of the stuff they put in the food. Tuscan says it's poison and won't take any food from anyone but my mom. I put some good food away in a secret place, but the food doesn't look so good anymore. Do you want to see? Sure, why don't you show us? No, I don't, th I think that's all for now, Stamba. Sure, why don't you show us? The youngster opens a hidden cabinet near him, and a sour smell like rotting fruit flows from the opening. See, it went bad. Finally, we got what we wanted. Mission accomplished. It's slippery, sloppy, stinky, and goopy. Stinky? But you collect what's there into a large specimen bag. Uh-oh. So we got we got the bad food. Welcome back. Are you feeling better? Save new game. Replace
Organics in an advanced state of decay, Jim. They're releasing some alkaloids which would induce sleepiness and suggestibility. However, the first effect this, uh, this mess would have, assuming anyone was stupid enough to try to eat it, would be extreme nausea. So it would never get into a sane person's system. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Now what? What do we do? Anyone got any ideas? So we know the mother brings the food to the other guys. Yeah, he did imply that. I have to thank you again for what you did for my son. I was feeling so depressed because I couldn't give him the fruit I know is better for him than what the Fae's make in the machinery. I don't trust the machinery food. That's why I tended the garden, made fresh food. Even Tuscan will eat food I give to him, and he doesn't trust anyone. If you ever need help, just show me what you want to give him. The youngster Stambob comes to the doorway. Mom, these nice people got me some fruit. It's fresh and everything, so you don't need to be sad anymore. Son, I'm so glad. It means the plants are healthy again, and... You won't have to eat food I'm not sure is good for you. Thank you, strangers. I'm going back to my room, Mom. But I wanted you to know. Captain, it appears that the inhabitants of this ship take it as given that food and medication go naturally together. With all respect to Dr. McCoy, I would dislike having a physician medicating all food that passed my lips. This is the wholesome episode. The machine whirs, lights blink, and a prepackaged container of food is deposited on the tray. The box of prepared food is light and compact. As a meal, the food in this little box is a tad high in carbohydrates by human nutritional standards. Still, it would supply about one quarter to one third of a day's average caloric needs and includes protein, fats, fiber, a bit of spices and flavorings. There are also drugs in the food, some of which we added, you know. It's quite heavy on the alkaloid tranquilizers. Bones, are you not saying your line's right? You okay, buddy? Save me, replace previous game. A computer terminal with various access ports, a scanning rod, and a workspace. A light scans the food box and the computer screen lights up. The food in this box has been prepared with standard quantities of tranquilizing alkaloids, calmatives, and euphorics. The drugs and chemicals added in preparation cannot be extracted without degradation of their potency. A light scans the reeking glop and the computer screen lights up. The alkaloids present in this organic mass can be reduced to a high-potency tranquilizer. The undesirable emetics and purgatives can be eliminated. The resultant drug should be mixed with prepared food and eaten to produce a soporific effect. Do you wish to prepare the specified tranquilizer from this mix? No, skip it. We'll just put this away and go on to something else. Now we're going to drug the food. Yes, continue. Done. The drug is prepared. Bring over the food you wish dosed with the drug, and the tranquilizer will be added. It is Big Follows. 
A light scans the food box and the computer screen lights up. The food in this box has been prepared with standard quantities of tranquilizing alkaloids, calmatives, and euphorics. The drugs and chemicals added in preparation cannot be extracted without degradation of their potency. The high potency dosage of alkaloid tranquilizer you have prepared may be added now, if you wish. Go ahead. Save new replace pre- Tuscan will only accept food from you. You said you'd help us after we helped you. Would you give this to Tuscan? It's heavily medicated, but that might help Dr. McCoy here to do something so he's better off. I'll take this to Tuscan now because I trust you. Go back to him and show him your food. He'll call for me, and I'll give him this instead. He'll be a good boy. Gotta show more food. We don't have food. Or maybe we gotta... quickly before the Klingons arrive. The machine whirs, lights blink, and a prepackaged container of food is deposited on the tray. The box of prepared food is light and compact. <laughs> I hope this is the right way. Protect me. They're after me. We'll hurt you, so just stay back. We really don't want to hurt you, you know, but you gotta stay back. Oh. See here, Captain Claw. I told you those Federation scum would be nosing around behind our backs. The Klingon observers seem interested in remaining to watch what goes on here. Save new game. Replace previous game. Rackaback is a large individual Rackaback. with a somewhat dull-minded expression, but wary and distrustful. He bears a strong familial resemblance to Gormagon, who is standing close by. Gormagon is a large person with a slightly cowed and uneasy expression. He bears a strong familial resemblance to Rakabak, but gives the impression of somewhat more intelligence. Tuscan is a rather mangy-looking individual of middle age. His hair is wildly disordered and his eyes wide and wary. He seems skittish and likely to burst into flight or fight mode at the smallest incentive. I am hungry. So hungry. It looks like good, wholesome. Maul? Where's Maul? I don't take nothing from nobody. Nobody except her. You'd do something to it. Make me different. You'd rewire my head. for me, Tuscan. I thought you might be hungry, so I brought you something you can safely eat. You know you can trust me, Tuscan. Yeah, I know I can. And I am hungry. Didn't want to eat something I couldn't be sure of, though. Give me that. Now I want to take a nap. Mom, you watch out for me, okay? Okay. Now what? The biggest betrayal. Same yeah, it really is. Game. All because we gave some fruit to uh, her son. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll betray. I'm more 
more interested in a good fight than in talking. I listen to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. They say we have to protect this room and keep anyone from getting into it. Tuscan's afraid. Well, Tuscan's just confused. I don't think I should go into it right now, but he thinks if people knew all about this place, they'd hurt his mind. Actually... Be careful, brother. Remember that Tuscan warned us people might seem nice, but not really be nice. I don't know what would happen, actually. After all, I can't read the future. I am feeling a little down, Captain Kirk. But don't bother about me. I'll be all right. So one of the brothers is stopping the other from talking. This reminds me of um, Disco Elysium, which we're going to be playing in a few minutes, where uh, there was Kuno and Kunoet, and you can only talk to one if uh, they were isolated. What could we do, though? Well, we, we could. Rackaback falls defenseless against the power of the phaser. An inelegant solution, Captain Kirk, but efficient. Yeah, it was Kuno S, sorry. I listened to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. They say we have to protect this room and keep anyone from getting into it. Tuscan's afraid. Well, Tuscan's just confused. I don't think I should go into it right now, but he thinks if people knew all about this place, they'd hurt his mind. Actually, I'm sure things would change. It might be a change for the better, maybe. Maybe not. I'm not sure what to think of you. I just don't know if I should trust you. Well, Gormagon, I think you should trust them. They've repaired the garden, which is good for all of us. They gave fresh fruit to my boy Stan Bob, when even his own mother couldn't manage that. Well, despite some misgivings I had, I'll accept what others have said about you. I think I should show you the way into the heart of the phase. The secret entry that Tuscan is so afraid of. I feel that something good can come of this. Okay. Save new game. Replace pre. Let's go. However, we're going to have to call it there for tonight. Or Save new game. Star Trek Replace previous Judgment game. Rights. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Special thanks once again to Worm for supporting the channel. Now we're going to do a small break and segue into Disco Elysium. It's going to be a really small break because we started the stream really late. So, ready for Disco Elysium in a few minutes. But thanks for watching. The Star Trek thing. <laughs>